Today I want to talk about treatment of the forefoot varus foot. Now forefoot varus is uh, where the front of the foot is tilted up where the big toe or first metatarsal is higher than the fifth metatarsal. This means that when you take a step the foot pronates inward to bring the first metatarsal down to the ground. Now this is a uh, cast of a foot or a pair of feet that show this forefoot varus. So when I uh, take the cast, I take it in an, a neutral suspension root balanced uh, technique. The subtalar joint is in neutral and the mid-tarsal joint is maxly pronated. Then I place the cast on the uh, table uh, after bisecting the heel, and the bisection of the heel parallels the lateral border of the cast, uh, sort of the lateral border of the calcaneus or, that I'm showing here. So we, we bisect the center of the heel and then place it on the ground. You'll see how it rotates in a pronation direction. Uh, you measure that and that gives you uh, the point uh, of how um, pronated or how much forefoot varus is in, in the cast. So you can easily uh, measure uh, the angles and I've pre-measured these where the right side is uh, 9 degrees uh, everted uh, and the, uh, which means a 9 degree forefoot varus was captured and the left foot is 8 degrees everted. So then if we take the, a positive cast, casts are always poured vertical. So we're going to replace these with two casts to demonstrate a positive cast. Now here's here's a positive cast that when you know poured has a slight degree of forefoot valgus. It's the left foot and the heel uh, when poured is slightly inverted means there's a slight forefoot valgus captured in this cast. Remember, the negative cast only captures the uh, forefoot uh, to rear foot relationship. Now, this is a cast of a about 12 degrees uh, of forefoot varus. So you see how the, just like in my negative cast of the left foot, how even though it's poured vertical where the top is parallel with a or perpendicular to a, to a straight heel you can see both of them uh, lean inward and produce pronation so forefoot varus produces pronation now the original work in correcting this foot was a doctor uh, Merton Root. And Dr. Root designed a way to balance the foot. So he, so the classic sort of root balance technique was designed. In this foot, we have about three degrees of forefoot valgus. That's captured. And Dr. Root uh, really. Um, made sure that all three, the metatarsal arch, the lateral arch, and the medial arch were all corrected fairly evenly. Uh, there was no dominance to one arch versus the other. Um, and this is typically used in um, forefoot varus of three degrees or, or less. So it's, it's only for a slight uh, a small group of forefoot varus feet 
And the reason for this is when you build up the forefoot varus, you're really supporting that first ray. And if the forefoot varus correction is more than three degrees, it tends to jam up the first ray, which leads to uh, functional hallux limitus and leads to uh, the development of bunions over time. So, and it blocks what we call sagittal plane blockade. It, it prevents the foot from moving from uh, the heel through the forefoot in an easy transition. So the classic root balanced orthotic I think is ideal for uh, a zero to three degrees of forefoot varus feet. Now, the next type is a version of the inverted technique. Now, it's probably for forefoot varus feet of uh, three to five degrees. Um, and what happens is you put uh, all of that three degrees of, of, of pronation support in the heel area here. So if we look at this cast now from the um, back, you see that the cast has been inverted and we're going to we're going to put the support for the forefoot varus back in this area and off not so much on the on the forefoot so this is this is your you know an introduction to the inverted technique and here again is our initial cast for the 3 degrees of forefoot varus and you can see how that one is set vertical. So these both left feet and one is a more corrected than the other and the transfer of correction is really from the front of the foot in the root balance to the back of the foot in the um, in, in the uh, inverted technique. Now the next cast is we call cast C now, cast C is for forefoot varus feet between 4 and 6 degrees. So you can see there's a quite a bit of overlap. Now, this is the same as the root balance technique, but now there's a proximal or more heel, like the inverted technique. There's more correction placed proximally. So here, the difference between this and the first cast is that now I've added a medial Kirby skive, uh, so I've added more pressure here, and I've made what we call a medial column correction or minimal arch fill. I've added to the arch. So again, this cast for four foot varus of four to six degrees has a is a vertical cast, but intrinsically the a um, medial Kirby has been placed and a minimal arch fill has been placed so that we're able to control the pronation better than your standard orthotic device. Now the next cast is A higher degree, excuse me, uh, but a higher degree of for, of uh, inverted orthotics. So this is for forefoot varus feet from six to nine degrees. Uh, it has instead of a fifteen degree cant, it's canted at twenty five degrees, which produces about a five degree overall cant and tends to work um, in, again, forefoot varus six to nine degrees. So uh, when you use the inverted technique, you undercorrect the lateral column and you overcorrect the medial column. So you're putting the weight, again, uh, more in the rear foot 
than you are the forefoot. So here is a 25 degree inverted orthotic versus our 15 degree. So the one on the, the right is the 15 degree cant uh, and the one on the left the 25 degree cant. Now the next level is Cass K in my collection and this is this is a, an interesting one that works really powerful and has been used for many years. So this is um, a it's really a root balanced orthotic that um, has uh, been poured eight degrees inverted. So it has all the intrinsic support. Dr. Root would, would use it in very, um, very selective patients. Um, you risk, you know, dorse, you know, jamming up the first ray a little bit, but I, I tend to use this uh, on some patients that I don't want to use the inverted technique because um, that does raise the arch more but I still want to get this forefoot varus corrected. So it's, it's good for forefoot varus between 7 and 10 degrees and uh, uh, we definitely we balance the foot uh, after pouring it 8 degrees and we, we do use a minimal arch fill for that. So again we'll add those to our molds at present here and so we see the one on the right is 8 degrees, the one on the, the middle one is 15 degrees and the uh, left one is 25 degrees. Now there are two other corrections that when, or when you have patients with forefoot varus over uh, 10 degrees. So we have two options. Again, we can use the more classic root technique. Uh, here we again pour the cast 10 degrees inverted, um, but we have to add the medial Kirby and the minimal arch fill or the medial column correction to get uh, a, a substantial amount of pronation control. And again, we're trying not to jam up the first ray. So that one I use uh, sometimes. Um, what I'm more comfortable with is uh, utilizing uh, uh, the, the inverted orthotic technique uh, for this. Uh, here again, it's, uh, this is uh, a, um, a 35 degree inverted uh, correction tends to work on forfeit varus over 10 degrees. It's a lot more medial column support proximal to the to the first ray. Doesn't tend to jam up the first ray as much as L would. Um, but you can also modify L um, or and, and the one that I had poured 8 degrees by thinning out under the first ray somewhat. So you can do modifications to these sort of modifications. So here is their, the highest correction um, that we're going to demonstrate here. So you see on the, on the right the cast is poured 10 degrees uh, with the um, medial Kirby and minimal arch fill. Uh, noted. So we've got the Kirby here and we've got the minimal arch fill here and then you have the 35 degree inverted orthotic. It has a, a lot of proximal support and and that can support the deforming force of the forefoot varus which is the uh, pronation tendency. So I hope this helps you understand the various corrections. So we've presented uh, you with seven different corrections that help with the varying degrees of forefoot varus feet that present to our office with pronation symptoms. Uh, thank